time for all your binge-worthy pop culture news. Welcome to Up and Adam. Hey, 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 guys. Welcome back and happy Monday. All right, guys. So there's so much coming up right now. I'm trying to get my YouTube voice and my podcast voice together because on YouTube, the algorithm says you can't say shit or else you get in trouble. On podcasting, I'm listening to people and they're saying whatever shit that they want. So I'm just like, I'm like a kid trying to speak two languages at the same time. In the meantime, guys, this is Hot Messy Topics. I know that we missed last week, but this week we are making it up with a very special guest, Ryan Bailey from So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey, who, by the way, is not only incredible and kind of lives in the top 50 on podcasts over there in the entertainment world, but he's also on YouTube. So now he's coming and bringing you the video versions of all of this and interacting with you guys. So if you want to follow him anytime during this video, make sure you go to the description of this video, click on that. And with that, let's talk some shit about Potomac, Beverly Hills, Vanderpump Rules, and everything in between. Let's welcome Ryan Bailey. Hey, what? hey, what's up? Look, I'm just looking at my messy hair from just rolling out of bed. I'm true. You're East Coast. I'm West Coast. So it is truly an up and out of moment for me. So, I hey, to, guys. Hey, YouTube. I, I said that, guys, over 100 in the room already. But I said that to you earlier. And I said, I am so sorry. I think it was. I So, guys, I asked Ryan last minute. Here's the deal. I'd like to be very transparent with you guys. We're getting ready to go out of town. Ryan's also going to BravoCon, but Jason right now is trying to figure out this podcast shit. And editing a <laughs> podcast is very different than editing YouTube. So Jason's like, I need you. Like you and Ryan talked about collaborating. The time is now. And I'm like, I'm like right now? And he's like, like in the next 24 hours, you need to figure out what Ryan's up to. And I was like, oh shit. It's, like I, my co-host is bailing on me. So now it's the time to collab, Ryan. And that's I what I like. Listen, I mean, I think YouTubers and podcasters have something in common where we are ready to collab at a drop of a hat. I like show. Yeah. Just tell me when, tell me where I'll just roll right out of bed. Let's do this. You, I'm up to like two in the morning editing the podcast anyway. So it's like get a couple hours sleep and then you start all over again. But what a great week to be here. Oh my gosh. There's so much going on, man. I mean, we have, Again, like we were saying, and as everyone comes in, we can talk about it, but we just got the premiere of Potomac, which did you watch? Yeah, of course. What do you, of okay. course okay. I I'm watched. Making, what do you, I'm it's just, like, did you go to, did you have Christmas this year? Yes, of course I saw Potomac. Yes. <laughs> so we have that. We have BravoCon this week, which who knows? They always say that, like, I mean, they always say there's only been one technical BravoCon, but they say that we have a big announcement coming. So hopefully we'll be around for that. I think I know what that big announcement is. You is probably it Roni? do too. It's Roni, but I hear that they're changing the name, actually, of Roni. It better not be Real Girlfriends of New York. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't. I said it on my podcast today, but it's Real Housewives of Manhattan, I'm hearing. Oh. Well, don't give Could it be. away to us. We have to go listen to the I podcast. I thought you just wanted, I thought you wanted the, I thought I was giving the, the, the spilling the tea, as, the as you kids like to say, yeah. Oh, we appreciate it. Hey. <laughs> I mean, I think, honestly... I know that we have a lot to talk about, but since it is hot, messy topics, we kind of bounce around the board here. We're not like confined to yeah. one franchise. So in your opinion, and I know if we want more information, we can go listen to your podcast, but do you think that it would make more sense to do one sort of total revamp as opposed to splitting us into two and having us on two different networks? I mean, that's why I would guess they would call uh, call it Real Housewives of Manhattan so it can get away from the Real Housewives of New York because it's almost too much pressure to, you know, like take that title on and then also do Real Housewives of New York Legacy. So I think they're doing the right thing if it is true they are renaming to Real Housewives of Manhattan because it almost lets, it, lets us get a fresh start and we're not required or tethered down by any of the past characters. Yet at the same time, Roni does have such strong, amazing characters that we love so much that it would like Roni legacy. It's like, OK, we can have Roni and we can have a new Real Housewives of Manhattan, which is almost setting us up for the future because it's such a great location. And what we saw from last season is when you try to to blend like, you know, downtown and uptown, it doesn't work. It's like it was just too, too weird between Leah and the rest of the older ladies. I don't and mean I that as a not complimented older no 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 Are yeah you? but of course and i also think that this almost kind of covers bravo's asses because a lot of people were really upset because there are multiple boroughs right in new york and people yeah. were like you're not really hitting harlem or brooklyn or the yeah. bronx or you're like not hitting all of these other places you're staying with all of these 
women right here within five avenues on the Upper East Side. We have the Regency. And, then, and, and, like, that's and then with Leah, we didn't even really get to meet any of Leah's friends. Like she hangs out with Kat Marnell, Azalea Banks, all of these like kind of like sir, like just wild women that I'm like, why don't we get to see that lifestyle at all? And so hopefully with Real Housewives of Manhattan, I mean, the only person that we know, I think that is confirmed, right, is Lizzie. Uh, uh, what's her last name? That uh, You can start with a G. I'm not, I, I'm not, uh, it's not coming up for me. She just actually, re she was talking about the Kanye debacle this past weekend and she was in page six, but I believe she's one of the only confirmed uh, Roni new cast members. Would it be now? Lizzie Savetsky. Lizzie Savetsky. Savetsky. Yes. Yes, I do remember her. So technically, Jill Mendoza in the live chat said, wait, are we going to have two RHOMs, Real Housewives of Miami and Real Housewives of Manhattan? But I would guess that they would turn Real Housewives of Miami into RHOMIA or Manhattan into RHO Manhattan. You guys are blowing my mind this early. I don't know how to put letters together like that. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could do MH, you could do, yeah, I mean, that is a great point. What would they do with the hashtag too? I mean, like, how are you? Because the Real Housewives of Orange County hashtag always confuses me as well. Do you put the two O's when you, you hashtag Real Housewives of Orange County or is it R-H-O-C or R-H-O-O-C? I've only had six shots of espresso, friend. I am not ready. <laughs> so I'm trying to get one down right now. All right. So now I want to talk to you a little bit before we get into like Beverly Hills and some Vanderpump Rules stuff, because Ryan's always rubbing elbows with the Vanderpump Rules cast. Actually, funny enough, people don't really know this, but I mean, some people do. We've talked about it a little bit. They we got right oh. Ryan back together with Sheena after this awkward <laughs> situation at Spilling Tea Live LA. And now you've actually you've met up with her since then and done her podcast, right? I've done her podcast and she's actually going to be coming on my podcast after BravoCon. And she, I mean, thank you for uh, organizing the re reuniting of our friendship. And and I had to apologize to Brock. I apologize to Sheena because she thinks I revealed her baby's name, even though there was all already That's like a whole a whole Reddit thread about it. And it was already like, so I was just, I don't know. I got too excited. I'm not really an account that gives you like hot tea. So I thought like, how cool, this is the baby's name. And then immediately I heard from Sheena's friend saying that I, um, you know, she was crying and all this stuff. So I had to apologize at your show and she was great. I mean, she's been awesome since, but now every time she sees me, she still calls me the enemy. So it's, it's great. I mean, listen, it almost, I thought what was going to happen. And the reason I got so excited, low key, just like a pot stir over here, like a true oh, yeah. Kyle Richards at heart. I'm sorry. And I thought she was going to come in. Like when Tom Sandoval was like, you know, Jax, you said that you don't feel anything. Do you feel this? And I didn't know oh, she was going to come see, at you. I, that's what it, you guys out there, like him and Zach did this live show and I could tell they were excited the fact that this was going to happen. And here's me. I'm like scared Brock is, listen, I'm a big guy, but like Brock actually has muscles. So I was scared that Brock was going to kill me. And oh, then she was shit, like, she was like, that. remember Brock when I was crying, this is the guy. And he was like, I don't remember when you were crying. He didn't even remember. And he's like, I don't care. You know? And it was so, it was just like, oh, okay, cool. But no, we're we're all good. And I would run away. Like if I caused that much drama, it would kill me. I'm no Jax Taylor. I I would I mean if Brock was coming at me, I would run away. I would run away with you. Oh, I know. And I have Brock a bad knee. A I, I wouldn't get far. I have a bad knee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So thank God we we were able to squash that. But now back yeah. to the Real Housewives of Potomac. For a premiere episode, Ryan and everyone in the live chat, if you had to give it a rating, 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, the best premiere you could possibly have thought it would have been, what would you give? I'll give it an 8. Yeah? Solid 8. Solid 8. The only reason I'm not giving it even higher than that was I don't think there was one moment, like, like compared to Vanderpump Rules, there wasn't that Jax cheated with Faith moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like so it was it was perfect in so many ways like i'm I, and i'm judging potomac harder than i would normal shows but it's that's the only thing it lacked but it doesn't mean like it's still a complete a plus but it, i'm just gonna put that one thing out there it didn't have that one moment of like holy crap you had the mia fight at the end but still I mean, everything was great i'm just being picky just being paid. See, and I think it kind of did. Thank you so much, Norma. Hi, Norma, Norma. Met you I in Norma, LA. Met Norma at your show, I believe. Yes. And also, um, in Dub in here, who also said that you were great in uh, Los Angeles. I give it a nine. Oh, thank you, guys. Eight, eight, eight point five. 
7.5. Okay, so I want to say this really quick. I know we didn't have the Jax Taylor cheating right away moment, but we have some weird shit happening. Okay, <laughs> we have some role reversals. We have Mia Thornton. Is she giving us a Brooks Ayers sort of situation with the cancer thing? Are we not getting the full truth? Is it for attention? Does she actually have cancer? Well, listen, all these ladies are here for attention to begin with. So anybody like it's kind of funny already that that is being used because I'm like, you're on Housewives. That's what the whole bit is in a way. But I actually, uh, uh, you know, I do think Mia can be problematic at times about a lot of different things. But I think this was genuinely potentially real and a lot like, you know, like I, I, I have family that have dealt with cancer and like how it, you know, it is so you'll be told things by doctors and biopsies take, you know, a little bit of time. So these things can happen. It's not, um, it's not crazy for me to believe that she might be telling the truth on this one, but even if she isn't, I love that she stood up immediately to Giselle at that last scene at the the party. I was like, yeah, this is exactly what we need. Yes, but true. And to be fair to Mia's point, Brooks made up a total cancer scheme. She could have yes. easily have been it's... told in, in her mind yeah. by a doctor, listen, we can't confirm this right now. We found a lump. We need to biopsy that. 70, we're, if you're asking ratios, we don't like to normally typically give ratios, but if you're asking right now based off of what we have, again, this is not the diagnosis. We have to wait for the lab results. It's looking like 60%. This could be cancer, so be prepared. Exactly. And she could have ran with that and been like, my life is over. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, housewives, you can even use this example of Salt Lake City as a kind of an example where, you know, Whitney doesn't have firm proof that she was potentially trigger warning abused as a child, but she's starting to recover memories. But we're going ahead and putting that on a TV show. So that could, you know, like, but I'm saying these things do happen. So I just enjoy that Mia is standing up for herself. Uh, Giselle immediately went in for the kill. And when you're talking about cancer, it is such a sensitive issue. The fact that Giselle was confident enough to fight with her about wow. is just wild because that's like cancer is just the most messed up, screwed up thing that we all hate. And Giselle immediately goes in on her about it. I'm like, that is the Giselle we know and sort of love, you know? Can we ask Giselle while we're at BravoCon? Can we ask her? Listen, Giselle, we want to bring you out for a drink. Well, you want to get a little yes. messy. Yes, I we, and you can bring Robin too. You can bring Rob. I'll pay for Robin's drinks as well. Like I'll, you're like that's what I'm excited about BravoCon. Seeing who will talk to me and who won't. You know, I think Chris Bassett might punch me in the face. See, I wait, wait. Is why does Chris dislike you? Oh, he hates me. Wait, I, why did you guys? Oh get my god, he, on you? he ripped me through Twitter. He said that I was the fakest mother. And I was a fraud. And he said to what? Fallon when that Fallon said, Oh, did you do a story him? about him? Or uh... no, because I had Candace on and she was talking. I asked her, it was at this time that I started my channel. She was one of my first guests. Her uh, manager at the time, Warren, got me an interview with her. And I asked her what her thoughts were about a very trending topic at the time, which was like half of the cast of Vanderpump Rules just got axed, right? Because yeah. of their problematic behavior. So I said to her, I said, what do you think about this? And she said, absolutely, 100%. They should be fired. I don't care if you said it when you were a child or you're an adult. You need to be held accountable. Okay, fast forward two months later. Then all of a sudden, these comments of her back and forth with a blogger, she said, you know, like, I hope you die because of the fat around you. And it was just very Yeah, I, oh, I remember that, yeah. Yes, and then unfortunately, that blogger did pass away. And then there were some other, like, other little like slurs that came out and then I was doing a video and talking to people asking like well this is interesting because Candace said that they should be held accountable and should everybody be held accountable if you're saying something problematic like this is also very problematic so in doing so Chris was sticking up for his wife I totally completely understand I just was not expecting to be called a fake fraudulent f because I was like yeah Wait, what yeah, so. Chris goes. Chris likes to mix it up. <laughs> Chris likes to mix it up. And by the way, that's another storyline we're going to get this season is Chris potentially allegedly cheating and trying to flirt with the other Potomac ladies, which just kind of blows my mind too. With Giselle. Yeah. And also, wasn't it with, like somebody else too was like, why weren't you at the W? I heard about that. In the preview? Yeah. And I wanted to ask you too, Ryan, because now we're hearing the story because Mia Thornton's coming out and she's just this like, I have cancer, but then she's like, I'm fucking broke. 
Yeah. Where's my? She's pulling out her wallet. She's like, "Where is it? I don't know. Here it is." <laughs> she's like, "There's nothing in it. Nothing." And yeah, she's, like, she's yeah. posting about it. Gor- Gordon's brother supposedly locked them out of the chiropractic business and took all their money and supposedly is broke. And she's been posting about this uh, even, I think, yesterday. Uh, as So it'll be interesting to see what the hell happened here. Thank you. Okay, Anne Sophie, we're we're married. You can you can actually. This could be. I don't know where you're at, but this is. Let's get you a. You're like this is. I am here. This no, is but, great. That's kind of like a tip right there. Like, I, I, yeah. See, and this is. Thank you, Mike. Um. So was Gordon never the owner? I'm so confused by this. I'm wondering if this is. Have you ever seen the show Succession? Yeah, of course. It's okay. Awesome. So is this like some succession shit where it's like the company is so big. There are so many moving parts that now we have a board. And <laughs> the that chiropractic now, business is so big. This yes. body joint pain business. Yes. And then half of that board just voted me, Gordon, the original launcher of the board. You guys just voted me off the board out of the boardroom. And now me and my wife are moving from the penthouse to the 23rd floor. What kind of bullshit is that? Well, I mean, it really does seem like that's the case is that they put him in charge and then they put him so in charge that he was able to actually get them voted out, locked out, however you want to say it. So it'll be interesting to see what this gentleman's response is to Mia. Now, Mia has the power of using social media. She has a bit of a following because of her housewife stature. So you're dealing with sort of a D level Kanye West in some ways where they're able to use this platform where Kanye not regarding all of the crap he said this past weekend, but in the last couple of weeks, he's tried to use Instagram as a tool to get back at Adidas and Gap. So Maya is kind of taking a page from, page from that book and hitting first, because who knows what the other side of the story is. I mean, there might be like, who knows, maybe Gar- Gordon, there was conduct unbecoming. Maybe there was all, of you know, we don't know what the situation was. And that sounds really weird just to lock them out of the company completely and take all the money, but still want to be part of the company. So I I think we'll find out more this week. I think we'll find out more this week. And I completely agree with you. But I was wondering, too, because she was going back and forth with family members after making this post about Gordon's brother. And then one of um, Gordon's brother's children, her nephew or niece, came forward and said, why don't you tell the whole story? Something to that effect. Right. And she's like, what part am I leaving out? So they're going back and forth. And she's like the whole story or the true story is that Gordon's brother wanted to employ his very lazy, (laughs) relaxed family who wants to just be spoon fed and not actually do the, I don't know what's going to happen. My point is, it's like, listen, it sucks moving to an apartment, but you might have to. Yeah, I mean, by the way, if we've learned anything from Jen Shaw, you got to downsize. You got to downsize, and sometimes it is the right, it's the right thing to do. But I mean, we'll see. It's another one, and and unfortunately, you know, cameras aren't rolling right now, so who knows what of this we will see on the show at all. Yeah, I mean, that's true. And then I have to ask you about this because I have never, in my wildest dreams, I never would have thought. Let's be honest, Ashley Darby. I feel like you're watching. <laughs> I know you watched my story. I saw you. I can see who watches my stories. And Giselle, you too. And your purple walls. And I'm all for it. But, and Mia, you too. But my thing is, is we're going through a divorce. But you're saying you're yearning for the Michaels. That oh, are we la- are we la- we're not allowed to say coochie on here? Oh, you can probably say that. You probably just can't say the actual terms for. Okay. Well, let, j- guys, you know what we're talking about. And truly, it made me not want to eat for the rest of the evening. It was so <laughs> intense, the phrase that Ashley said. And Ashley is one of the most beautiful, hot women out there. She's stunning. And, I mean, really stunning. So when she says that, I mean, I guess you're like, you know, when you're with a partner for a long oh, time, okay. you're going to you're gonna have actual cravings for them, I guess. But with Michael Darby, it's like, I mean, that's. I mean, that literally sent us into a meme frenzy last night on Instagram. Cause how, I mean, you just, that's such a, such a visual sentence. And we know Michael Darby, like the audiences know Michael Darby uh, and Ashley knows him in a very different way than we do, but it's hard to imagine. I know all the Smeagol memes. I feel so like, 
Oh, man, poor Michael Darby. He's just trying poor to Michael Darby. Out. Then stop acting like he, he, he. like I stop know, making those weird faces. Then he's trying to be out here and live his best Lord of the Rings cheating ass self in a hotel room and do his thing. You know, he doesn't have too much hair, but he's not quite bald. He like likes women, but maybe he also might like other things. You don't wait, wait, wait. Know. So you're saying he's his hair is indecisive, his sexuality is indecisive. The I guy don't can't know. make up his mind. Is I'm he bald? Indecisive is he hair? about him. I'm not. I think, dude, we still have footage, you guys. This isn't like the Beverly Hills Sprinter van. We have footage of him grabbing ass at a producer, remember? Like, we have, like, he made oh. production uncomfortable in ways that I still find. Listen, the Try Guys are letting people go, but they kept Michael Darby on for two seasons more than they should have. Okay, so then what do you think about this whole, this is the thing, too. She signed a prenup. Now, she her prenup expired after five years. It's been eight years. But then last night on Watch What Happens Live, she told Andy that they're she's like, you know, I don't know. Some days I want to be with him. Some days I don't. You know, like it's it's a back and forth. There was the straw that broke the camel's back. But then she kind of gives us a little bit of a tidbit. And she said that there was some extra language in the prenup that she didn't realize. And Andy was like, uh oh. And she's like, we're trying to figure that out. And I'm wondering, oh, what does that mean? Like is the pre there could be an in, there could I mean so maybe there could be something in there about an infidelity clause and you would say oh Michael would have like screwed that up but maybe so they said even last night Ashley said there was a situation there there was another girl she was attracted to and he wanted to see that happen and she wasn't down with that anymore maybe there's an infidelity clause for her as well and maybe she did hook up with somebody else this is completely alleged just what I'm thinking in my head maybe there's that on both sides. And he could use that against her, even though he encouraged it. That's just yeah. my mind working. Like, I've heard nothing, like no rumors about that. But I know infidelity clauses are in prenups. Okay, so my next question for you, too, would be Robin Dixon now is where this is the most annoying <laughs> thing on ever. I feel like we've been getting married and trying to figure this out for like six seasons. Right. We're getting yeah. married. We're not getting married. We've been yeah. together the whole time. Is he going to propose? He proposed. Now we're building a house, but one person's lazy. But now we don't want to get married, but we want to prenup. I saw where some people on Twitter last night were like, that's kind of bullshit that you asked for a prenup because, you know, at one time he was making all of the money and you weren't. Well, he asked for a prenup at that time. And I am super pro prenup. Like if Jason and I get married, we talk about this all the time in front of people. We're like, there will be a prenup. Jason grew up in a family where his parents were together his entire life. And my parents have been married 11 times collectively. So oh, I'm like, yeah. there's not in my head, you know what I mean? Like yeah, no, I know what you mean. My parents have been together the entire time too. So I, I have like a, but I, I do understand with you should, especially leave with what you came with in the marriage with, Yeah, uh, you know, if you earn money together, say you do own a chiropractic business together, you split that. But yeah, I, I don't, I think in now in today's day and age, prenups are necessary in a lot of ways. Uh, but I also think it's one of those kind of things of like Robin, Robin might just be stalling the process too. Robin is not the get up and go kind of person. We know that she likes to keep a very slow pace. I don't know if we're ever going to see this. I mean, I want to see this wedding. I think since it'll be on the show, hopefully it'll push towards having a wedding. But at this point, it's been so long and, you know, they are interested. She's interested in her money and she doesn't want to waste a big chunk on a marriage. I kind of understand. I kind of a wedding. I mean, I kind of understand that. I agree with that. And then my next question for you, too, would be, what were your thoughts about Dr. Wendy Osefo potentially enlisting <laughs> Peter Thomas? <laughs> <laughs> to be an investor. Listen, I love it. I mean, listen, Peter Thomas coming back on our TV screens from Real Housewives of Atlanta. And then also it's like, Wendy, watch Real Housewives of Atlanta. You want to see if you're going to make your investment back? Go back and watch Peter. Like, like I like Peter, but like, it's just funny. He's like, like we have to I, can, I can guarantee, I can guarantee 20% in two years. I'm like, no, you can't. You cannot guarantee that. That is a bold faced lie. You know it. I know it. And if Wendy watched any of the seasons of Atlanta, 
you know, she would know it too. Like Wendy, you like Wendy is the, one of the smartest women on Potomac. And she's like, you know, a commentator on news stations, a professor, all of this stuff. And she's going to get taken in by Peter, but I'm here for it. If she's re- willing to film this, like, heck yeah. I loved, I, I, I love seeing Peter on screen. It was, it was a joy. I cannot wait to see the Giselle storyline with him as well. Oh, Peter, Peter. All right. Well, before we move on to the next topics, what, would you say if anything that you're looking forward to them, you know, like looking forward to the most out of the Real Housewives of Potomac? You know, to me with Potomac, and this is the biggest compliment I can give something I'm looking forward to it all. Like my thing is this is a cast that works so well together. This is what you call a team. This is like the 94 bulls with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Rodman, or, you know, like this is, this is an actual team. Even the characters you don't like, you appreciate who they are and what they bring to the table. Each one of those ladies works. And I just, it's like, immediately I had a smile on my face within the first five minutes and the way Karen Huger's like, Ooh, you know, her facial reactions, the line she says, this, this show is just working on a different level because I think it brings audiences joy and the squabbles they have are very different than the squabbles of a real housewives of Beverly Hills. It does not have the baggage where sometimes we feel guilty watching Beverly Hills now because it's just too intense. There's too much happening. It's like people are fighting over picking sides. Yeah. I mean, but Potomac, I'm like, it, it really reminded me of why I why I love Housewives. This to me is just classic Housewives. And they it looks like they're going to have another dream season, I, I think, without anybody going to jail, without any court trials, without any, you know, like the stuff that drives the other franchises. This one, the ladies drive the franchise. I agree. I agree. All right. So I wanted to pick your brain about a few other things before we let you go, because I know you're a busy guy and you just woke up, right? No, man, I'm here for hours. Let's do three, four hours. Let's do this. It's early in the Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 a.m. over there, and Ryan is a trooper. My next big thing that I wanted to talk to you about was, well, just a simple fact. Earlier, we were talking about PTSD. You were talking (laughs) about Whitney Rose, who doesn't remember her childhood. And I have a conspiracy theory about that, because... Does she not remember her childhood or was it something that she didn't specifically want to name? Because for me and a lot of people, again, since we're over here, I've explained to a lot of people that I had one stepmom who loved to terrorize me. Like I have marks on my body, like crazy wild. She was just a psychopath and she lived to just be the worst human being in the world. And it was like a, I was a punching bag for her, but I remember all of it. So when I'm sitting there listening to Whitney's story I'm trying to understand. And I think that she did have the the reaction that she had. I think that she went through abuse, but I'm wondering how much of that she really can't remember or if it was to such an extent that she doesn't want to explain on national television, which I could understand. But then I was listening to a podcast called Sophia with an F who was interviewing Lala Kent and Lala was talking about how recently she obviously over the last year has been going through this breakup And she said that she's seen photos recently of her in the house because she deleted all traces of photos and videos of Randall Emmett. And she saw photos of her in that house. And she's like, I don't remember this. I don't remember any of my time with him. It's like PTSD. And I'm like, well, she, should, she should read her own book. She should read, give them la la. It's all in there. Um, no, I, I think the mind is a very powerful thing. I can actually believe us like blocking things out. I, I actually tend to believe Whitney in this instead of, because look at him, like that scene with her and Justin, where she's like, Justin, let me pour you some more wine. I got to tell you something. And it was on the couch. And it was one of the more intense scenes I've seen on Bravo where I almost felt like I shouldn't even be watching. Like, I'm like, am I, am I, I feel like this is too secretive. This is too real for me. And the question she asked him was like, do you still love me even? And it was like, like, oh man, of course. And it just kind of shows what abuse victims go through of like, they, they, she's still blaming herself potentially. So there could be memories that start coming back in a flood, but I do believe this as actually a thing. Like I do believe you repress memories. That is just my, and Whitney, to me seems to be an, uh, a straight sh- shooter for the most part. And, you know, hopefully, I, I don't know. I just think that it's like interesting that this is all coming out so quickly. I mean, in the second episode, we're already at an intensity level uh, of a 10 where you're like, oh my God, this is not even anything to do with Jen Shaw. I mean, this is 
I mean, this is if she finds this out on national, you know, television, that's wild. You know, and it's so crazy, too, because, well, aside from this, Renee. Thanks, Renee. Um, Ryan appreciates you. <laughs> Joe, Joe, um, Caroline, a lot of people are saying lit real red. Yeah. People can block it out and people have the ability sometimes if it's that overwhelming. It's almost like I guess it would be like a protection mechanism. See, and that's the thing is like I never blocked it out. I carried it into my adult life. And then being with somebody who's 10 years older than me, I would sit there and whine about my childhood to Jason and be like, I'm a victim. Wow, you just really threw Jason under the bus right there. Being with somebody so much older than myself. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, and he did. And he would look at me and he's like, he's like, Adam, get the go over it. You're not a victim. And I used to, at first I'd be like, you have no idea. You weren't there. And then I realized he's like, you're an adult now. Like, this woman does not control your life. You get to control and like paint this like picture, whatever, write this story. And I'm like, yeah, you're fucking right, Jason. I do. But, uh, but think about it. Uh, but think about it. The humans have like a great, um, you know, we have this great ability to survive at all costs. So sometimes that means I would imagine blocking things out just so you can keep moving forward. Listen, Adam, I blocked out the entire last season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I couldn't tell you what happened on it. I don't know. I don't even know who Tom Girardi is. I've blocked it out because it's too traumatic for me. But I know I truly believe you that had to it talk about very, it or if you were going to get cancer. What's that? You had to talk about it. Or I else had, you were it's build. The cancer is building up. That's why I do the podcast so I can yell about Lisa Rinna so I can get my cancer out and try to work through my PTSD that she has given me. No, that I mean, listen, it makes total sense, which, by the way, perfect segue, because I am so curious with we have switch ups coming to BravoCon. Now we have people are saying Kathy Hilton's not going. That's not true. No, no, no. Kathy in the comments said she was going. She's like, you bet your sweet bippy I'm going. And yeah, she's, she's like going. We're... Yeah. The only two people, the only differences in the people that were added were Lisa Rinna and Ramona, right? Yeah, Lisa Renna and Ramona were added. And I mean, I'm excited to I I I Ramona, I think Ramona needs this, you know. I think she but Lisa Renna, I wish by the way, can we all agree? Can we boo Lisa Renna at the Beverly Hills panel like a wrestling match? Can we be like, woo? It would be so great if she got up there because you know she would love it. Like this lady loves any sort of attention you throw her way. But I think it would be funny if we really do treat it like a wrestling match. You know, like a, a Hulk Hogan, just like we just go what crazy. What day is that panel? It's Friday, I think. It's Friday at like noon or one. So wait, what kind of ticket do you have? I just, dude, I had, I just have general admission. Like I was, I'm working aspects of like for direct TV and a couple things, but not actually the act, at, not actually at BravoCon. We're doing like, there's like some party thing and then I'm doing a video for them on Friday. So I'm going to be at BravoCon probably rolling up right around the Beverly Hills panel. I pray to God I don't miss it. But um, yeah, I just have a general admission pass that I had to buy myself. I don't have the VIP thing. And then at Bravo PR, I mean, going back and forth with them, it's like, I know they're inundated right now, but we were promised like something more and then we haven't gotten that yet. I, Who knows? If anybody has any connections, please help. Because it's just like, we're trying to get as much content. I mean, we have the iHeartRadio pod and it's like, sometimes we're treated like the redheaded headed stepchild uh, over over there, even though they do, they're great, but we just want to make sure we try to get as much stuff. So my audience can, can be a part of it. That can't be there. Well, and I think what happens to only because I've talked about this, I have a members only live tonight at seven. I do it like every other week. And I, it's like, let's whine about it where we just bitch about shit. And yeah. I also had this like sort of situation where originally I was, you know, kind of given this sort of these, passes for jason and i to go to BravoCon, but not necessarily like it was trying to figure out if i was going to be able to mod anything which obviously oh yeah like happen. that was uh, yeah i would have loved it no and and then i talked to so then that didn't happen so then i got that whole situation taken away after the jen shaw interview and now i'm going <laughs> again but then I was even talking talking to like DJ Richie Sky, Emily D. Baker. Now you, oh, you have a huge platform. Emily has a huge platform. Wait, they Richie. didn't pick Emily to moderate like a, a Beverly no. Hills courtroom panel? No. And I, I even said to Emily, I'm like, your podcast is bigger than like E! News' podcast. I truly don't understand. There seems to be like a handful of people. And I love the handful of people they do have moderate. Like I love Dave Quinn. I love Gibson. I love all of those people. Hey, and Dick. listen, I'll work, my, I'll work my butt off to, you know, listen. 
they'll be next year and the year before I'll work my butt off to get there eventually. Um, but I, I do believe in what I have to offer. I do believe in what you have to offer. And, and listen, if we have to create our own independent festival, we'll do that. But my thing is, um, I just think it's just weird. It's like we try to bring this to as many people as we can and try to celebrate this network and these shows. And I just feel like sometimes they don't. Um, for Shannon, but okay, Renee, I'll date you, but I'm, I'm trying to date Sutton Strack, by the way. Um, uh, I don't know, but no, I just feel like sometimes I wish they would actually uh, realize that we carry a really good message for people and that they should try to get their people on, you know, like it's, it's, Here's, it's one of those things. I, don't know. I think too, like, to be honest with you, to piggyback off of what you're saying, I think that there are so many instances. And like, when I think about reaching out, because you know, this, reaching out to NBC and PR, like they have a job to do. They have to vet everybody. Yeah. They have to make sure they're sitting on the line when you interview people. They're on yeah. the Zoom call. They're moderating it, making sure you don't ask something that's going to ruin the future episodes. I get that. But then I'm sitting there thinking like, I got an interview with the the woman who Portia ended up taking her husband and marrying him. And she had a baby with her assistant. Not once did we say anything negative about Bravo. I got an interview with Mary Cosby's parents who I edited a lot out from and it made people have sympathy, empathy for Mary Cosby, which I didn't even know that was possible. And then like the Jin Shaw interview, we never said anything about Bravo. So I'm, I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm the last person that should be on your worst enemy list, but well, also, listen, I, yeah, I mean, I go, I can go intense on my recaps, but any kind of interview I've ever done with them. I mean, listen, I've even, you know, cause you, when you get on with the PR people, I'll even be like, is there any topics to stay away from afterwards? Is there anything you need me to cut out? Is there anything like we both have left things on the cutting room floor? I mean, I remember interviewing, uh, um, uh, from girls trip, Blank uh, Phaedra. I interviewed Phaedra and I stayed completely away from a topic that was on the show because they had asked me to. And she was like, she was willing to talk about it. So it's like, I do respect what they give if they give anything. I really do respect them and I know how hard they work. But it's yeah. one of those things of like, trust me, like you can give me the ball and I'll make sure this person looks good. Like, uh, it's one of those things you can trust that like, I'm not even one of those people that will get, like, I'm not trying to get any like revelations. I don't, I'm not going to hit you with that like question that is like, I, I'm just genuinely excited to speak with these people. And I think the audience is, is excited to hear like, sure. Of course they want tea, but like, I, it's also just really exciting to hear from them. Well, and that's the thing too. And you know, like for, for them who's watching, I think what happens is I think that they have a core group of people and this is, Listen, at the end of the day, no harm, no foul. This is a business, a yeah. multi-billion dollar business, right? NBC as a whole. So they have people in place who are making sure that shit gets done a certain way and that they're delivering the message or narrative that they need to deliver. So I understand. It's not it's not the end of the world. But um, Norma, Adam, is this YouTube a Tinder for Tinder. Ryan? <laughs> so no, it is not. But if you guys want to, well, you need the description <laughs> of this video. Go subscribe to his, and maybe his members only will be sort of like a Tinder. I don't know. Um, well, you bashed Andy sometimes up and at him, but people should still give you an invite and special play. I don't bash Andy. I, I will say, I will say, Andy is one of the people. I am such a pro Andy person. And in fact, I have to defend him a lot of the times, but the sad, the sad reality of it is he won't give me the time of day. I have zero abs. I'm trying to get one ab. So uh, Andy will pay attention to me at some point, but I mean like he'll even see my stories, but he won't like ever like one or and I'm just like, Oh, oh does man, he watch your on. stories? Like, yeah, he has before. And like you see, and then you're like, I can't even get a heart on that. I can't even get a like, come on, man. So I would, I'm, I just think what Andy does is, he doesn't get enough credit for that circus to be able to be in the center of it and keep things moving. I am one of the people that actually watches Watch What Happens Live religiously. I find it such a great late night talk show and I genuinely like his radio show. I'm a huge Andy Cohen fan. We could have um, totally moderated some sort of segment for they should have given us the Vanderpump Rules segment. Oh, do we would have slayed that because we know that. Like, I mean, like I, we I literally slayed. worked with I was with Lala trying to get her to train and fucking take over my shifts before she was give them Lala fucking Kent. I mean, I'm talking like, to Ariana today for my show. Like, I mean, like this is like, I mean, we got uh, we're, screwed. 
we should introduce Tom Sandoval and the most extras at, at BravoCon. Come on. Well, and we're not because they're doing that for Andy's ball on Saturday night. So they're doing like a whole show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, guys. Sorry, I didn't mean to complain, you guys. No, this no, is just no. Like insider, oh, my God. I was, like, we, were both, <laughs> we were both going down the rabbit hole together. But before we end up wrapping this off, um, Ryan, I am curious. Are you excited about uh, season 10, the new season of Vanderpump Rules with all of the drama that's out there? There's hookups, there's divorces, there's sandwich shops, there's new bars, LA Times exposés, weddings. Are we going to get the LA Times expose covered? I mean, because I, yes. I know we can't have Lala's child in it now. But no, we I, are. Okay, good. Because I figured once Amy wrote that article for the LA Times, I was like, this is a great entrance point because now they can use it on the show. Like Lala could have been prevented from trying to bring up Randall herself. But now if they talk about the article, that's actual legal and they can bring it into the show. So I thought that was so good that that article was written. Uh, of course, I'm excited for it. Vanderpump is one of my first loves. Will it be as powerful as the first couple of seasons? No way in hell. But that doesn't mean it's not going to be amazing. Like it's just that these characters have moved past the bar that we originally fell in love with them at. Like there is, you know, if they treat the reality of this situation of these guys all kind of growing up, uh, starting to make money, kind of pulling away from each other. I think to me, that is fascinating. Like I, I think that's fascinating. I'm so curious about Raquel and DJ James Kennedy's breakup. I'm so curious about DJ James Kennedy. I'm curious about Katie and Schwartz, then Schwartz and Raquel. We have a lot of moving pieces here that really, if they put it together the right way, I would imagine could be insanely powerful. I mean, you even have Sheena getting married. So for a 10th season, I think they have enough. I mean, if they if they don't stick to landing, I'll be very bummed. Listen, I, I, I completely agree with you. I feel like, honestly, Jason always calls every season the season of completion. I thought once we fired everyone or canceled them or as per Stasi, socially excommunicated them, whatever you want to call them. Um, I thought maybe we wouldn't have a show. But then watching season nine, I was like, well, we're trying to make Lala the new Stasi. This is a little strange to me, not loving it, not too much drama, and it feels a little pre-produced. But then watching or listening to season 10 and talking to a few friends, and you know, because, you know, um, it's going to be an exciting season, but like you said, it's it's very different from the very beginning. Like when you had the AC units in your window and you were striving to get That's, out there. Adam, my idea was that for the 10th season, they should have put them all back in their original apartments and like kind of like Big Brother and made them live that lifestyle again and made them work at the bar. You should do Vanderpump Rules Big Brother where they have to go back to their old lives because I would love to see Tom and Arnie, Ariana back in that apartment. In fact, they still they still have that place. I know Ariana's brother was living in it before, but like they still have that place. I would love to see those old days. In fact, there is that sick part of me, even though I don't want it truly to happen. But like I would I mean, sometimes I want to know really, truly what is going on in Jax's head. And I, I oh, don't want him back know. on the show. But like, man, entertaining TV. You'll never know. You'll never yeah. know. But with that, guys, we're almost 45 minutes in. So I want to say a huge thank you to everybody. The Super Chat, Super Stickers, Mods, everybody who engaged in the live chat. Ryan, it's always a pleasure. Don't. Um, did, did we? I mean, was this enough people watching? Did I? Huh? This is. Is this enough people watching? Should I? Am I a loser? Did we? Oh my god! No, no, no! More? We have over okay. five hundred people in the okay. room. Is that okay? That it, it means that it's okay. consistently okay. like going up and down. And no, that's perfect. And guys, for those of you, I know that we know so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey on Instagram and podcast. But if you want the video versions, like the fun, you get to see him while he's making the commentary. He holds his nose when you get to see this mustache. Impression. Yeah, the you Beverly Hills one. I do, all, do all the I do all the voices. It'll be it's it's fun. Go subscribe. You, you don't want to be robbed of your visual senses. Then go to YouTube <laughs> in the description of this video and subscribe to Ryan Bailey. Smash the like button. It's free. Like Ryan says, it's free and it helps the algorithm. I can say that for YouTube. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying for a podcast, but please. You know, I'll, I'll help you out with the podcast. Out. Podcast, you just say subscribe, five stars, leave a five-star review on Too Messy, uh, the new hit podcast, because what that does, folks, it's free to do, first off, to leave a five-star review, but it also helps with placement. So on Apple, they'll have things like, if you like this, listen to this. And when you do those reviews, it kind of moves you up on that scale. So when people are listening to other pop culture podcasts, if you click below, it'll say, you know, people that like this will like, and then you'll have the two messy pods. Oh, so it's like really the... important. Yeah, it's really important to leave those reviews. Uh, you don't even have to write anything out, like a big written out one. Just hit five stars. Um, uh, Renee is, is like really popular. Renee, Renee, by the way, Renee, I feel like today. Renee is 
potentially related to me and is just trying to be really nice. Um, she's <laughs> very nice to me. All right. Like, I, I swear right, to God, good. Renee is not me on another account. Oh, also, no. thank you to Maditza and Sandra who work with me. Thank you, guys. If you're watching, thank you. What do you think? You're at the Oscars? Yeah, um, you got, I guess this just means you like me. You really like me. I'd like to thank uh, UTA, my agents, my publicist. Um, I'd like to thank Erica Jane, uh, Lisa Rinna for really upsetting me every episode. Uh, oh, I, am I getting played off? What's going on here? Yeah. Yes, you are. No. All right. And then on top of that, guys, don't forget that tonight we're doing our 7 p.m. Eastern, so which is 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific members only live let's whine about it it is pinned in the live chat so go check that out love you guys so much we have two other videos dropping before let's whine about it and don't forget to go subscribe to ryan ryan say goodbye. beverly hills this week beverly hills this week this week bye guys